I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining us. I'm joined in studio today by a few people here, and uh, we'll start with our, uh, we'll say our producer, James Egan, and next to him is author Dan Pertios, and next to us on the floor is Franklin. And there's a lot uh, to talk about today, gentlemen. First of all, welcome to Quincy Access Television. Thanks for coming in. Uh, there's a movie we're going to be talking about. There's a book we're going to be talking about. So I'm so glad that um, you joined me here at the Quincy Access Television Studios to kind of tell me a little bit about yourself, about the book, about the movie. Welcome, welcome, oh, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So before we get into the movie, before we get into the book, just if you could tell our viewers a little bit about yourselves. So James, we'll start with you, a producer, a movie producer, you know, a lot of among people, other things. Among other things, right. But uh, I think a, a lot of people at home will always say, what's a producer do? What's a producer do? You and know? I was thinking about that <laughs> as I was sitting down because this, might, this will be an education for folks as well. You know, I, I guess when you work in independent film, a producer does everything, you know. You know, you even, you know, make breakfast. When I was on a film in Africa, I was cooking the crew on a little tiny hot plate, you know, to, in, out in the middle of the uh, back, out back of uh, Africa. You know, you, in this particular project, you, you're, you're there from the very beginning, from the idea to the conception to the development of it. You work with the writer, you... You find the financing if there's no financing, if it's not a studio picture, and you, you, work, you really work to support the director and the director's vision to make sure that, and particularly me, because I work with a lot of first-time directors, uh, they really need that encouragement to know that their vision is, is going to come true and, and, and help support that. And then in the very end, uh, as in this case, um, and because of the book, uh, you find the distribution deal which, you know, you can be making the greatest movie in the world, but if nobody sees it, then what's the point of making it? And, and, and nowadays, the distribution deal is really one of the hardest parts of it in getting a, a film made and then getting it out there. So, uh, so like, I, you know, like I said, producers do everything, whatever it takes, and uh, I, I love it. I love the whole process. You are retired now from teaching out in California, and... I'm sure a lot of talented students have gone through your classes. So to your point about um, finding distribution is key, because there's probably a lot of great talent out there. Well, and I taught at USC, which is, you know, very, um, it's a film school that is really industry oriented. You know, that's one of the big, big criticisms of USC is that it's very, Hollywood and one of the reasons that they hired me as a professor I was a screenwriting professor but I was most interested in or being hired to help the students find a, a different perspective that didn't include you know special effects but really a story because I really think that key to every important film is story and, and caring about the characters and and really wanting to take that journey with the characters and so um, they brought me on because one of my films had won the Spirit Award, which is the Independent Spirit Award. It's like the Oscar, but for independent films. And uh, so I work closely with students, teaching them, most of all, to focus on the emotional journey of the character and making sure that the audience really cares about this character. And then from there, you can have special effects, but you know, like one of my students was Ryan Coogler, and he did a, a film called Black Panther. And I really believe that Ryan, you know, Ryan was in my class, he was writing a cowboy movie, if you can believe all that, he went from cowboy movie to that. But uh, again, I think in Black Panther, you care about the characters, you know, and you're really emotionally involved with them, even though there's like a, z a zillion dollars of special effects. And because of that, I think, you're going to be it's going to be easier for you to find distribution because any distributor is going to look at a film and say wow i'm moved by that i'll take a risk and that certainly happened with this film uh, wild about harry dan i want to turn to you and uh, talk about um you had a role in that movie and we will talk about that yeah. but next to me is a book that you have written you are an author right. uh, talk about um your authorship you know i was a journalist in northern california in Sonoma County, I wrote for a small paper there, 
And um, I, it was about politics. <clears throat> it was about health issues. And it was about my dogs because they've been a very, uh, they've been my core support really uh, for, since the 80s. Um, and um, though people really liked everything that I wrote or, or disliked what I wrote, depending. They were um, reading it. They were reading it, exactly, and commenting on it. And, and, but what really resonated with lots of people were my articles about my dogs. And, and it just seemed to happen. The first one was Nicholas, and then Willie came along, and, and it just continued. Um, and I start thinking, well, you know, maybe I should write something about my dogs. Maybe I should focus on that. And um, so that's how the dog books began. Um, and this is the first one. This is a scene uh, that I had worked on before. And it had been a long t part, and then it was cut down. And now I've expanded it for this one because it stands alone. It's a great read, you know? And I love how the book and the movie connect. And we will talk about that. But I think for folks, uh, Wild About Harry is again the movie. And we will show a trailer of that. And then we will come back into the studio to talk more about the, both the book and the movie. <laughs> Here we are. This is our new home. <laughs> Daisy, slow down! Huh? Maddie, it's the penultimate view. You gotta come see it. You think there'll be boys there? I hope so. <sighs> Get a move on. <gasps> Bye, Dad. First Bye. Good no kiss. I like your bell bottoms. I like your bell bottoms. Yeah. Katrina Brown. Harry Goodhart. Pleasure to meet you. Another eligible bachelor, perhaps? Morning. <laughs> toodaloo. Oh, toodaloo yourself. Gorgeous. <laughs> Who's this Gibbs? This Gibbs is my new business partner. So you're the other half. Some say I'm the better half. <laughs> well, I hope to see more of both halves and your primitive. Mr. Gibbs is going to be living with us in the back until he can find his own place. Mr. Gibbs! Your bathroom looks just like my dad's. <gasps> you haven't told him yet. Anyone finds out, I lose the girls. I'm a man in law. Customers are in laws. I know about your father. Why didn't you tell me? It's not my business. Is telling inflammatory and damaging lies. You've destroyed our entire family, Madeline. Do you realize that? It's all of our school. Oh! Then why did you invite him to live with us? They're my children, Mom. Law does not allow homosexuals to raise children. How would you like if your children were taken away from you? I won't stand for it! I'm still your father. was the trailer to Wild About Harry, a film that we will be talking about along with the book that chronicles uh, to a part the, the movie. It's a period piece set in the early 70s and the subject matter. And talk about, I guess we can look at how acceptance has changed over the years. And back in the early 70s, it was a different time. This is a true story. This is, you know, inspired by a true story. This is our, our director, Gwen, growing up in Dennis, going to Dennis High with her sister, uh, Daphne, uh, and her father was well known in, in Dennis uh, for making American primitive furniture. They had a really great, huge, uh, they had a big reputation for American primitive furniture. So they, he was a known artist. They were friends with Edward Gorey. You know, they, I don't know if you, if you see in the movie, there's a big, picture, a painting by Edward Gorey. So there, the, this was a family that was part of the artistic scene in, in, uh, in, um, in Dennis or in, in that part of the Cape. But so they were very visible and they had to be very careful because uh, Gwen was, or his father was very afraid that the children, because he was gay and with his partner, Mr. Phipps, 
they're going to have the kids getting away. And their grandparents were very well established uh, in the movie. They're professors and academics, but in reality, they were diplomats in Washington. So they had a lot of power and could easily have taken the children away from Mr. Phipps and, and her father. So one of the surprising moments for both of us, when we, we, uh, had a, a, we gave the Hyannis Film Festival the film to show, uh, to raise money, and Gwen, the director, invited all her high school friends, and then we had the Q&A, and one of her friends stood up and, she, and said, uh, N now we understand why you never invited us to your house. This is like how many years later, like what, 20, 30 years yeah. later, yeah. they're saying, oh my God, that's why we never got to go to your house. So even now it's still a revelatory film for uh, Gwen's friends, you know? Well, and I said acceptance, but it's become, we now embrace diversity. I have to say that the movie, I enjoyed the movie. Yeah. And uh, first time director, good job. You know, yeah. good job on Gwen's part. The film was made in 2009, but uh, nobody would distribute it then. It was not a film that, it, I don't even think Ellen had come out yet. You know, it was really, there was no films being distributed on a national level like that, ex, you know. A positive message about having kids. You know. Gay it really family, was unique. You know, the kids are all right. Look how long it took for the kids are all right to come out. I mean, it's, it's only eight years ago, so we had no uh, option. And then uh, during COVID, Dan uh, decided to, 2019, right? Something like that. Whenever COVID, COVID hit, the early time. So it was shelved until shelved, 2019. Shelved. Nobody had seen the film. It was so yeah. crazy. So. Uh, He's writing this book, and I said, well, you're going to write a book about making that film. You better see that film. Right. So here we are in COVID and lockdown, you know, and we, we call up Gwen. We say, Gwen, send us a copy of that film. And what for? Because we want to see it again. So here we are in COVID, lockdown in Palm Springs, and we're watching the film, and we look at each other and we go, we love this film. We've always loved this film. It had a great feel. Uh, it looked beautiful. It Beautifully moved shot. well. Yep. The actors were top notch. Incredible acting and a good emotional and a teenage and, 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 and it's all from teenage girls. How many films do you see that are so powerfully driven about gay life from the children of, you know? We had this, this screening and in San Francisco and it was packed. And after it was all over, the, it was so emotional. All these kids were like, you told our story. We've never seen our story. This is what it's like, you know. You know, it was like, oh, it's, it has an authenticity that we didn't even, we had no way of measuring, you know, without that kind of an audience. And then I got a bug and I said, okay, that's it. I'm going to get this film distributed. The Thomas Crane Public Library will be hosting a film screening and discussion for the film Wild About Harry. That is on Saturday, June 17th from 2 to 4 p.m at the community meeting room at the main library here in Quincy at 40 Washington Street. Uh, there's also a book signing that day, correct? Yep. So talk a little bit about what's happening at the library that day. Well, there's a, an introduction to the film and the uh, introduction includes uh, Dan and I talking about the relationship of the book to the film and how most people, you know, I would say 90% of people have never been on a film set like his parents, you know, his parents come to visit the film segment with his Aunt Rini, you know, they're like, well, how come there are lights outside the house with the, you know, like, and they're inside the house. And, you know, we, there's a giant light, you know, pressing on the house and we're trying to create morning lights. So you could tell right away that people really enjoy learning about the film, how, how the film, how to put together an independent film. And I think the book uh, really gives you a, a real detailed look of how to make an independent film along with a you know a kind of a great tour of Cape Cod because he, he went everywhere and then uh, we screen the film and uh, I, w I won't say the girl gets the guy in the end but maybe <laughs> you know what you want folks to come down and, and see the film and, and talk to you naturally so it, we'll leave that as a, as a teaser a beautiful ending without really saying any more for these yeah. two 
I'll You're say right. I'm a fan before, yeah. before yeah. we, yeah. without right. saying any more. Yeah. Best of luck on the film. Thank you. Best of luck on the book. Thank yeah. you so much, and congratulations as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Great to be here, Quincy. Us.